Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Marlboro Junior Reporters. Today's guest is Mark Martirosian. Mr. Mark is an illustrator, cartoonist, animator, and a toy designer. Mr. Mark, welcome to the show. Great, thanks. It's good to be here. Now, Mark, we have a few questions for, that we'd like to ask you. Excellent. Now, my first question for you is, what would you consider to be your best work, Mr. Mark? Oh, that's a great question. My best work, the easy answer is to say my best work is the next piece that I'm going to be working on, but I've been very proud of the project that's actually shown here on Marble Cable Access, which is Drawing with Mark. That was a lot of fun. A lot of people collaborated with me on that show, and it worked out really well because I had the intelligence for once to surround myself with some very talented people, and they did a great job on the program. So I'm really proud of Drawing with Mark. Mm. I very much agree with that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I also have a question for you. Yes. Uh, what made you get into drawing? What inspired you? What inspired me was actually my parents, because my father, my mother was a writer and student, and my father was a designer. And I kind of grew up around art, and one day when I was eight years old, he brought home some original comic strips that appeared in the newspaper, like Dick Tracy and Lil Abner, and I was just fascinated by the original art. It dawned on me, oh my goodness, human beings actually wrote and drew this, just ink and pencils on paper. And what a great way of communicating ideas and getting, getting your ideas across. So that was, from there on, I just kept practicing my drawing and kept trying to do my best and made a few mistakes, but kept going. What, what do you feel like working on a big part of a show or, you know, like a book, like illustrating? The biggest part? Yeah. Yeah, the biggest part is, is planning it out. Actually, one of the things is, is like when you go into a store and you see like a finished illustration book or a finished movie, you're seeing the end product but it's actually all the work that goes on before that that is where most of the work takes place and where most of the planning takes place because a lot of what you do has to be approved by other people, it has to be vetted by other people, so a lot of it is the pre-planning that goes into it. Even before you start drawing a single figure like Aladdin or Jasmine, a lot of writing and editorial decisions have to be made beforehand. Oh, I bet you that's super hard. <laughs> now, um, Mark, when I was doing research about you and your show, Drawing with Mark, I found a link to a website called drawingwithmark.com. Now, um, when you go onto that page now, the web page is currently unavailable. Whatever happened to that website and what was on it? What was on that website was a lot of drawing programs. Unfortunately, what happened was is that there was a dispute as to whether programs could be shown for free or we would be charged for it. My feeling is, is particularly these days, is that the programming should be free. So that's a great question because what we're doing right now is we're transitioning from drawingwithmark.com to drawingwithmark.org. And I'm busy, and I'm happy to say I'm busy setting that up, and I think there'll be some fun clips and drawings on that website very soon, I hope. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thanks. Me too. <laughs> Hello, I'm Josh, and today's fun fact is that jellyfish have no brains. This fact was given to me by Sophia. Thank you for watching. When you got into art, I also heard you did freelancing. Could you tell me a little more about that? Yes, freelancing was fun because it's, you're kind of your own boss and you have to set your own hours, but you have to be disciplined enough not to be watching uh, TV or going on the internet all day. Because if, with, one of the things about having deadlines is, is, that you, is that you have to discipline yourself to make sure that if you have like five weeks to do a book, you have to make sure that within those five weeks that you've set up yourself enough time to do it correctly. So that's the major thing about freelancing is having the discipline to do it quickly, but with quality. Like here's a book that I drew. 
obviously, I think you probably all recognize these characters. That's the book I was talking about <laughs> the other day. R really? I told you I know almost all of his work. Hmm. Yes. You don't own Mickey's Wish, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's Wish. That was a fun one. But see, like each one of these, if, to give full credit, somebody, I did the penciling and the inking, and then somebody, another artist, did the coloring. But I did all the layouts for this and all the penciling and making sure where the, where the characters were going to be standing. I received the script. Then I had five weeks to draw all this. So as you can see, it was pretty detailed. And a lot of times the art director would come back, and this is the thing about freelancing, is you have all these different bosses. The art director would come back and make some changes, and want, uh, maybe he, he or she would want the figures to be a little bit bigger, that kind of thing. But this is where, oh, and of course, Ariel, this is where giving yourself enough time and being disciplined enough to say, OK, I'm going to stick with this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best, and I'm going to spend the time practicing, and because sometimes I'll draw a page and then it's, I'll say it's not quite right. Because again, what you're seeing is the finished product, but it takes a lot of work behind the scenes to reach the end of that finished product. So sometimes, like with this drawing here, I had the, the dwarfs coming out of the mine, and then I realized Snow White was blocking two of them, so you start over again. Hmm. When you were our age, if there was a program similar to this one, Junior Reporters, would you have signed up for it? And what do you think you would have gained from it? Oh, I definitely would have signed up for it. I, I was involved back when cable, actually back when cable access was first starting in 1980. I went to one of the first meetings in Newton about, and, and about the beginning of the studio. And that was fun, so I did I was a little bit older than you guys then, but I was, I was always very interested in this kind of programming, and I'm really thrilled that you guys have done this and have, have started this kind of program because it's, it's the, it was the original promise 40 years ago of cable access, of enabling everybody to have the right and the ability and the opportunity to be on TV and get your ideas across. So this is really exciting. Yeah. Hey, come here. Did you know that water rides at Disney don't have seat belts because they would get moldy? Isn't that disgusting? Now, how do your books look compared to how they look before the full editing stage? Oh, excellent. You mean like before and after? Yes, before and after. Oh, well, that's a great question because actually, and I brought some stuff here too, like I was doing um, my own series called The Magical Attic, and it was a comic strip that appears in about 20 newspapers around the country. And here's a good example of like the penciling that I was doing. This is, this is the penciling stage. On the back, I had written some notes to myself, and up here I'd written some notes in which I was writing the joke or the story out. And then I was sketching out the characters, first in blue pencil, and then in darker pencil. And then, after I do that, that's when I go to like the inking stage. And then I start inking them in black ink with a brush, and then it gets erased. And then I scan this into the computer, and the, it's in the computer that I add the lettering and the final coloring. I enjoy doing that that way because I enjoy doing it by hand first because I just love to I just love the feeling of pencil on paper and creating something right here that I can actually like here I made the line a little bit too thick so I used some white out that's okay that's why we have erases at the end of pencils if no one gets it right the first time it's always trial and error and it's a lot of practice and that's what I love about comic strips is being able to sketch it out try out the ideas first and as an example, like here's a really good direct example to your question. Like this is a book I'm working on right now called Slime Time Fun by my friend Franklin Smith. And it's a book about two Bigfoots that live up on a mountain. And here is my pencils. These, this is a, my pencil work, an actual original of the character on, on a bicycle. So this was my 
pencil sketch for this page here. Ah. See, there he is. There he is riding his bicycle. Mm. So this was the pencil, and from there I inked it. And you can see the the darker inking there. Then I scanned it into the computer and added the coloring and the shading and also some of the shadows under the wheel. So this way, by, by, by doing the pencils first, I give myself a chance to work out his anatomy. Because even though he's a Bigfoot, he's a bit, he's a, he's a bit of a, like he's a tall basketball player kind of physique. So I want to make sure that the hands and face were all correct for that character. Because he's very different from this character, the Hopodome. So by doing it in pencil first, you're giving yourself a chance to work out your ideas and make sure that you're happy with what you've done first. There's no rush. Again, you're seeing the finished product, but as you can see, a lot of planning goes into reaching that point. Wow, that's, that's very interesting, Mark. Thank you. I have my final question for you. Yes. Um, so the show, um, Drawing with um, Mark, what made you want to start it? Was it because you wanted to show other people or is it just for your own personal? That's a good question. It was a little of both, I think. I think it was a question because I, I had been doing guest appearances in schools and pretty much like from every age level, from age five to 85. And I had taught at the college level sometimes and done guest appearances in schools. And I wanted to get, spread the word, so to speak, about the fun of drawing. But being only one person and only having so much time in the day, the beautiful thing about like cable access and television was having the ability to put it down on tape and send it around. And at one point, we were on like 125 different cable access stations. So that was really a lot of fun because that way it was getting the word out across the country about how to approach drawing, how much drawing can be very both relaxing and rewarding. And it was a chance for me to show people some of the things that I had learned along the way of drawing all those years for Disney, some of the techniques and approaches to, to one's art that you can apply to any kind of work that you're doing, whether it's playing the piano or practicing the violin or sports. You can take that same discipline and apply it to those kinds of activities as well. So drawing with Mark has been very rewarding that way and getting the word out. Wow. Yes, uh -huh. so thanks for answering our questions, Mark. We'll be back in a moment to hear our questions from our team. Hello, I'm Oliver, and today's fun fact is that the DreamWorks Company was founded by pure spite and upset from Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was working at the Disney Company before. Therefore, their first movie was made as a direct competitor to Disney's Bugs Life, coming out at the same time and starring ants in a society. And we're back with questions from the team for our guest, Mr. Mark. Hello, Mr. Mark. My name is Joaquin. I have one question for you, and that is that I hear you work for Disney, Cartoon Network, and other things like that. Now, what is your favorite piece of artwork that you have done in your career? Oh, that's a great question. It's really hard to choose out of all the work that I've done for all those different companies. But I would say the first thing that just came to mind was a, a Sleeping Beauty coloring book that I worked on about 20 years ago directly for Disney's... Um, it was a Sleeping Beauty coloring book that adapted the movie which hadn't been really done in coloring book form before. So it was 64 pages of adapting the movie. And that was before the internet, before people had the ability to just call up the movie on the screen. So I had to watch the movie like again and again. There was a lot of homework involved on that one. And I that chose which scene from the film I was going to draw and make sure that it looked accurate. And I'm happy to say that that book did really well for the publisher. I got fun fan letters about it. And what was really gratifying is that people, other artists within the industry were saying that they used it as reference if they wanted to see what a certain scene looked like. They went to the coloring book to get an idea of like, oh, how many fairies was in that scene with 
Aurora at that moment. So that was, that was very gratifying because a lot of the preparation and homework paid off. In, in the end, a lot of people enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mr. Mark. My name is Arian, and I have one question for you. Yes. Uh, how did you get started, and what made you decide to become an artist? Well, one of the things that I began to realize is that when I, when I started drawing comic strips for my neighbors, they were actually enjoying them. So that was getting, because I used to draw a comic strip when I was about eight, nine years old, that just for, me to, for myself to learn. And I didn't know that there was such a thing as copy machines or Xerox machines. So I would draw the same comic strip five times and give it to five different neighbors, slip it into their mailboxes. And I did that like for three weeks every morning. Just would get up at like 7 o'clock before school and start drawing the same comic strip five times, slip it in their mailbox. And yeah, they were probably being neighborly in their comments, but still they seem to be genuinely enjoying them. So that was very encouraging to keep going and start drawing and start really practicing and drawing from life and drawing, looking at how trees really sway in the wind and how people look when they're running, because a lot of that had to do with learning animation as well. So that was, it was great practice. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Mr. Mark. So my question for you is, out of every illustration you've drawn, or maybe even a current one you're doing, which one has been the most difficult for you? Ooh, that's a good question. I think the one, there was one that I just finished um, that I'm going to post on my Facebook page pretty soon. Now that it's out, I can, I can post it on my page for everyone to see, which was a, it was for a puzzle. And it was, a, it was a mermaid, not the little mermaid, but it was a mermaid with like a, a merman and an undersea chest. And I had to draw like 75 different sea creatures under the water and it had to be done realistically and it had to be done very much in precise detail. And it, I love to draw cartoons, but this had to be very realistic looking. And I think one of the things about it that was a challenge and the most difficult part of it was making sure that 75 sea creatures floated in very smooth fashion around the main characters. So not only was I responsible for casting the characters, so to speak, but I was responsible for designing how a person's eye would follow all the flow of the sea turtle and the fish and everything and reach the middle where the treasure chest was. So that was a very difficult but really rewarding exercise. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mr. Mark. So my question is, so I know you worked at Hasbro for a while. So yes. what was the main thing you worked on there? Oh, that's a great question. I believe I have right here a nice piece of, let's see, this is, and there he is. Yes, to answer your question, my favorite and main thing that I worked on there was Mr. Potato Head. This was for a Mr. Potato Head book. <laughs> and this was, it was Mr. Potato Head through history. So he went like to Fran, well actually in Mr. Potato Head around the world. So he was on top of a mountain and he went to France and this is, this was a lot of fun. It, eventually this was the original, this is the original art and this is the final inking, and then it was scanned into, and I colorized it and everything, and it was a lot of fun. I did, I did mainly Mr. Potato Head, a little bit of My Little Pony, a little, couple of pieces of G.I. Joe, but, and a few other characters, but mainly Mr. Potato Head, and I love drawing him, because he's, so, he's, he's such a cute family. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you. Um, what made you interested in toy design? Toy design was fun because when I started working for Disney, I had, I had been doing cartooning and drawing like this all a lot. But where I got interested in, in toy design was because one of the first things I did for Disney was dr designing a Cinderella stepping outside of the coach. And 
also a Maleficent figure. So that was like getting thrown into the deep end of the pool because I'd never done it before, but they wanted, they wanted me to draw Cinderella stepping out of the coach to be sculpted. So I had to draw this elaborate with four horses and the coach and, the, and Cinderella. I had to draw it from five different angles. It, so I had to draw it from the front, the side, the back, the top. And it just was fascinating being able to draw it from all these different angles. And I thought, how cool is this? I'm designing something that's going to be three-dimensional. And it was a lot of fun. And that's what really got me started on it, was the challenge of having to draw something and think three-dimensionally, which is why then I, one of the things halfway through, I realized, you know, if I sculpted this out with clay, I could get an idea of how what her face looks like from all the different sides. So that was a really fun challenge, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Mr. Mark. I'm Sophia. And my question is, what do you have to say to people that want to draw and be like you? Oh, that, one of the things I would say is, is that keep practicing. It's like learning the piano or playing the violin or playing sports. It's like a lot. Just keep practicing. If you, if you feel, don't ever, everybody gets discouraged at some point. Even I do sometimes when, you, when I'm trying something new or something that I've never drawn before. Like um, horses continue to be a little bit of my Achilles heel. Like I, I'm really good at drawing cats and dogs. For some reason, horses, it just is a bit more of a challenge. But what I do is, and what I really recommend anybody that wants to learn how to draw is, I call it not drawing off the top of your head, which is, if you want it, and I quickly, I quickly began to realize this, if I want to draw a horse, study a horse. If I want to see how a horse runs, watch videos of a horse running. If I want to draw a tree, if I, if I look at a tree, and I draw from real life, that enables me to get more of an authenticity into my drawing by drawing from real life. So if I want to draw a superhero, I obviously don't look in the mirror, but I think about <laughs> what, what kind of person would be that heroic to do something like that? What kind of man or woman would be that heroic to do something like that? So I look at faces of people helping others in, in a charity or something, and I s look at the view on their face of this person, of these two people, both of whom in a way are helping each other. And I think I try to capture that essence, that emotion that's on their face, because then it gets across that heroic feeling. So I really recommend that anybody that wants to write or draw or film their own movies or animate their own programs, study those around you, study real life, and just keep practicing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for answering all our questions. We appreciate all the hard work you go through and everything you do. It was very, very interesting to see some of the uh, before and afters of your um, books and your creations. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. This was great. It's I a really pleasure enjoyed having it. you here. Thank you. And thank you for watching this edition of Marlboro Junior Reporters. We'll see you next time with the Marlboro News. <laughs>